If you've learned Spanish or German or maybe another language, you may be familiar with conjugating verbs. In English, verbs don't change much in the present tense. We do say he speaks as opposed to I speak or you speak. But in many languages, we have a different ending for each person. I, you, she or he, and so on. And we'll see this in Russian too. There are two types of verbs, two conjugations in Russian, and they're grouped according to the type of endings for each person. They're usually called first conjugation, or ye yo conjugation, and second conjugation, or e conjugation. Those names come from the characteristic vowel sound that you'll hear in many endings. The ye yo conjugation has ye or yo, and the e conjugation has e. In this video, we'll focus on the ye yo conjugation. Let's start with the endings for the present tense of chitat to read. Ya chitayu, ti chitayesh, on ana chitayet, my chitayem, vy chitayete, ani chitayut. You'll notice that they're different for every person. There's a ya form, a ti form, and so on, and these verb endings change so that the verb agrees with the subject. We can look at this as a stem, chita, that we'll add the endings to. Here's another example. Znat, to know. Ya znayu, ti znayesh. On ana znayet, my znayem. Vy znayete, ani znayut. And our stem here is zna. Notice how when the stem ends in a vowel letter, we spell the ya and ani forms with the letter u. Let's look at another ya conjugation verb, pisats. Ya pishu. Now, what do you notice that's different here? A few things. The endings of the ya and ani forms are spelled differently, with the letter u instead of u. And that is because the stem ends in a consonant letter. And the stem itself is changing. The s in the infinitive has changed to sh. Now, how do we know that's supposed to happen? Well, I have to break some not-so-good news. Uh, you might want to sit down for this. You cannot reliably predict verb conjugations from the infinitive. You must learn the conjugation separately. That's so important. Let me say it again. You cannot reliably predict verb conjugations from the infinitive. You must learn the conjugation separately. But the news is not all bad. Russian verbs are not completely random, and there are patterns and some strategies you can learn that will help. But still, we can't reliably predict which pattern to apply just from looking at the infinitive. So, this means your best strategy is to learn three forms, the ya form, the form, and the any form. If you know those, you can predict nearly all other forms. So it is something of a challenge. Beginners may want to invest in one of those 1001 Russian Verbs books, or maybe a verb reference app. There are some for Android and iPhone. Now, here are some patterns to help with the ye yo conjugation. The ti, on, ana, my, vy forms have the vowel ye as long as the ending is not stressed. If the stem ends in a vowel letter, the ending of the ya form is yu and the ani form ending is yut. If the stem ends in a consonant, the ya form ending is spelled u, and the ani form ending is spelled ut. And how do we know the stem is pish, not pis? Well, because you've learned the three main forms, ya, the ani, in addition to the infinitive. Let's look at another example, zhit. As with pisat, the stem here ends in a consonant, so the ya form ending is spelled u, and the ani form ending is spelled ut. There's no v in the infinitive, so how do we know the stem is zhif? Again, it's because you've learned the ya, the, and ani forms separately. And here's another important pattern that has to do with the ti, on, ana, my, v forms. Ti zhivyosh, on zhivyot, Мы живем, вы живете. 
Here we see that if the endings are stressed, the vowel of the ending is yo. How do you know if the endings are stressed? Well, because you've learned the ya, the, and any forms. And while you can't predict the stress from the infinitive, there are only three possibilities. Verbs like jitats have fixed stress. It's always on the same syllable in the stem. With some verbs, stress is always on the ending, as with rit. With bisats, we saw that stress can be mobile, that is, it can move around. The good news is that in this category, stress will be on the ending for the ya form and one syllable back from the ending for all the other forms. So it's not random, it is consistent for this specific pattern. And do we really care about stress? Yes, we do. And not just for the sake of good pronunciation, but as you'll learn later, we often need to know the stress pattern to figure out what various other forms should look like. So if you are serious about Russian, be sure to put stress marks on your flashcards. Say your new words aloud as much as possible so you know what just sounds right. That may seem like a lot of rules, but remember, if you get in the habit of learning the ya, ti, and any forms for each new verb, then you'll get used to the most common patterns before too long. Summing up. Russian has two verb conjugations, the ye yo conjugation, or first conjugation, and the e conjugation, or second. The conjugations cannot reliably be predicted from the infinitive, so be sure to learn the ya, li, and any forms. For ye yo conjugation verbs, if the stem ends in a vowel letter, the ya and any endings are spelled yu and yut. Ya chitayu, ani chitayut. But if the stem ends in a consonant letter, the ya ending is spelled u and the ani ending is spelled ut. Ya jevu, ani jevut. Other endings begin with ye if the stem is stressed or yo if the ending is stressed. Mui chitaim, but mui jivyom.